Welcome back. Hopefully you've already watched my introduction to trusts where I've gone through the different types of trust. What we're now going to do is move on to the tax implications. And this recording is going to look at the income tax aspects of being involved with a trust. Now, if you remember from the previous recording, we've got two main types of trust to consider. We've got interest in possession trusts and we've got discretionary trusts. Now, for each of them, we need to think about the position of the trust itself, because the trust is a taxpayer. And then we also need to think about the position of the beneficiary who is receiving income from the trust. And we're going to do that in turn for each of interest in possession trusts and then discretionary trusts. OK, interest in possession, first of all, the trust. Well, here it really couldn't be simpler. The trust pays basic rate income tax on everything it gets. So if you think about the type of income that might go into a trust, really, there's three main things. Uh, you've got property income. If the trust owns property that it rents out, you've got interest. If the trust has money that it puts on a deposit and earns interest and you've got dividends, if the trust uh, owns shares and it gets dividends on the shares. So on the first two, the rent and the interest, the trust will pay 20%. On dividends, the trust will pay 7.5%. There are no allowable deductions, no personal allowance. And when you think about it, it's too simple to examine. The, the, the examiners have got absolutely nothing to go at there. Take a number and multiply by either 20 or 7.5%. It's just too easy. Where the examiners have got a little bit more scope with interest in possession trusts is the beneficiary, because we know that there is a life tenant who is entitled to income. Now, not only do we know that, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs know that as well. And so they know that whatever goes in the trust, OK, it'll be reduced by basic rate income tax, may also be reduced by trust admin expenses that may have to be paid out of the income. But whatever's left, the trustees are legally obliged to pay on to the life tenant. And so HMRC are able to track the income in the trust, see what's used up with tax and expenses, and whatever's left is automatically taxed on the life tenant. Whether or not it's paid out doesn't make any difference. The revenue know the life tenant's entitled and therefore should ultimately receive. And this income flows through the trust and it's taxed on the life tenant in its original form. So if it was dividend income going into the trust, it flows through and it's taxed as dividend income in the hands of the life tenant. Same for interest, same for rent. If there are any trust expenses reducing the income, then they come first from dividends, then interest, then rent. And because the trust has paid tax, you then gross up for basic rate tax, and the life tenant is taxed on the gross income with a credit for the tax suffered by the trust. With a discretionary trust, in, in some ways it's the other way round in terms of complexity. The trust does give some scope for examiners, the beneficiary's position is really very simple. To start with, it looks pretty simple for the trust. On the face of it, the trust pays additional rate income tax on the income received. There is a slightly worrying word there on the slide, most. Let's, I'll come back to that in a second. Let, let's just, just assume for the moment that it's all of it. So that means that any rent or interest, the trust pays 45%. Dividends, the trust will pay 38.1%. Again, no deductions, no personal allowance. The beneficiary, we, we have to look at it differently from an interest in possession because no beneficiary has any entitlement. So you can only tax the beneficiaries on what they receive. So the beneficiary is taxed on trust income equal to the amount received and you gross it up by 100 over 55 to take account of the fact that the trust has paid a headline rate of 45%. The trust income for a discretionary trust is always taxed as non-savings income and it comes with a 45% tax credit. Now, if, if you're only looking at this to get a basic understanding, that'll do, that, that's enough. And, you know, you, you'll get most of the marks in an exam question. There are sort of three complications, though, involving the trust. The first is that discretionary trusts actually get a 
£1,000 basic rate band, allocated first to rent, then interest, then dividends. The second, this is probably the messiest bit to get your head around, is that income required to pay the general expenses is only taxed at basic rate. Now, again, we have the same idea as interest in possessions, that expenses are first paid out of um, non-savings income. No, I beg your pardon, I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> expenses are first paid out of dividends, then they're paid out of interest, then they're paid out of rent. So, what you've got to do is think, right, if the expenses are coming out of dividends... The dividends are going to be taxed at basic rate. So how much do we need to fund the expenses? Well, it's the expenses times 100 over 92 and a half. So what you do where you have general admin expenses of a trust, gross them up by 92 and a half, 100 over 92 and a half. That amount of the dividends is taxed at 7.5%. The rest of the dividends are taxed at 38.1%. The final complication is the revenue then had the horrible feeling that in some situations they might give out more in tax credits to beneficiaries, because remember, but distributions to beneficiaries carry a 45% tax credit. They might in some circumstances be giving out more in credits than they're receiving in tax. So you have to keep a little tax pool working to keep tabs on the tax paid by the trust matched against credits given on distributions by the beneficiary. And if the credits on the distributions exceed the tax paid by the trust, then the trust has to pay a top up. That's it. As I say, those last three bits are nice to haves rather than must haves to get a basic understanding for most exam purposes. The bit that I covered in blue will be fine.